gentlemen, I am Bruce Christensen of the Mare Island Navy Art Association. And on behalf of the American Legion, Manuel L. Corazon, Post 603, and the city of Vallejo, I welcome you all to our beautiful and historic city. To set the scene for today's 80th anniversary ceremony, I'd like to uh, recap what went on 80 years ago right here in Vallejo. Late in the morning on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a signal came through the ether to a very quiet Mare Island Naval Shipyard where senior telegrapher Van Dayton was standing watch at the headquarters building 47 across from Alden Park. When a message began coming to his telegraph station by Morse code, since that was the method of, tri of communicating back in 1941 by um, hand tapping a key on a, on a uh, device called the bug. This message was marked urgent and read, air raid on Pearl Harbor. This is no drill. This was the first word word of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor to reach the continental United States. Prompted by the gravity of this first message, telegrapher Dayton, his priority was to relay the message to Washington, D.C., where it was handed to the Secretary of State at that time, Cordell Hall, who happened, ironically, to be in a meeting with the Japanese ambassador regarding maintaining peace. Word of the attack would begin breaking in the press about a half hour later. Later, This all happened after a, a 7.55 a.m. attack to Pearl Harbor, which reached the mainland here at Mare Island about 10.30 a.m. So, where do I fit into all of these events? Well, on December 7th, 1941, I was living with my family in Vallejo, where my father was employed, at Mare Island. And I later on went to work at the shipyard myself for 36 years, and I've lived in Vallejo for 80 years, with only a four-year break out of Vallejo when I attended the University of California at Berkeley. Now, since we have foreign dignitary with us this morning, we will follow the U.S. Department of State protocol. If you are able at this time, would you please stand? And I would like, if possible, for you to remain standing for the following events. First, there will be presentation of colors, followed by the National Anthem of Japan, followed by the United States National Anthem, then the Pledge of Allegiance, and an invocation. So with that, I'd like to ask the Travis Air Force Base to present the colors.
Thank you. Now, the national anthem of the United States will be sung by U.S. Air Force Airman First Class Keegan Bushauer. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose but stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave right shoulder oh the pledge of allegiance will now be led by Luther Hendricks, gold medal award winner, World War II. We have with us uh, Chaplain Paul Del Rosario. Please uncover. Dear God, on this 80th commemoration of Pearl Harbor Day, we hope and pray for your unconditional blessings and divine guidance. Today, Americans and people from all over the world gathered to pay tribute to the men and women of the greatest generation, whose honorable service, uncommon valor, and selfless sacrifice preserve freedom and liberty at home and abroad. Today is also an important commemoration of that fateful day because it reminds us that even once bitter adversarial nations can become friends and allies and that the conflict and tragedy of war can indeed result in lasting and prosperous peace for everyone around the world and for the greater and longer term good of all mankind. We ask you, dear God, to safeguard our troops in uniform, to care for our veterans, and to continually strengthen and deepen our collaboration with other nations in order to build a better and more peaceful world for our current and future generations. Amen. Amen. Stand by. Colors. Colors turn. Hearts. Well, first, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the San Francisco Station U.S. Coast Guard for the hel helicopter flyby and the Travis Air Force Base Honor Guard for presenting colors. Along with the U.S. Airman First Class King and Bush Hour for singing the United States National Anthem and for Luther Hicks for leading the Pledge of Allegiance. And finally, I'd like to uh, recognize again California American Legion District 5 Chaplain Paul Del Rosero for giving us the invocation.
Now there's a there'll be a slight deviation in the program at this time, uh, in order to accommodate State Senator Bill Dodd. So at this time, I'd like to call State Senator Bill Dodd forward for purposes of a delivery. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I welcome everybody here. Thank you very much for coming on this very historic and important day. Uh, I was asked today to do the proclamation from the governor of the state of California on Pearl Harbor. Eighty years ago today, Imperial Japan launched an unprovoked attack on the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor, killing more than 2,400 Americans and destroying much of our nation's Pacific fleet. This attack led to President Roosevelt to call on Congress to declare an act of war that following day, stating uh, December 7, 1941 would be a date which will live in infamy. As we mourn the lives of those we lost on that faithful day, we remember those who defended Pearl Harbor and all those who answered the call to serve our country in battlefields across the world. Each year we are reminded that these immense sacrifices and all that we owe our service members who fight to defend the freedoms we all cherish. On the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, let us reflect on the meaning of sacrifice and heroism and pay solemn tribute to the American heroes who gave their lives that day. Now, therefore, I, in place of Gavin Newsom, governor of the state of California, do hereby proclaim December 7, 2021 as Pearl Harbor Remembrance, attested by Shirley Ann Weber, a PhD Secretary of State. Um, I appreciate uh, Mayor McConnell for uh, uh, giving me this privilege to uh, uh, start a little bit early. Uh, I got a number of things on my schedule that I have to make this morning, but I do want to make special uh, uh, notice of Hiroshi Kawamura, uh, the general counsel of Japan, for being here today. And as uh, as our uh, chaplain uh, uh, Del Rosario said, I think it's really important that where we are today in our relationships uh, with those adversaries from years ago, we're allies, we're strong friends. I've been over to Japan uh, myself and have been to your uh, World War II uh, uh, memorials. And it's with that strength of friendship and uh, now today brotherhood that we can move through and hope that uh, those mistakes by any country are never made again. I do thank you and I thank everybody here uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity in front of this beautiful uh, Mare Island uh, today. Thank you very much, Bruce. Thank you, Senator Dodd. At this time, because we do have uh, other dignitaries in the office that I'd like to have recognized, I'm going to call forward Vice Mayor Rosanna Verda, and uh, she can do the, the introductions. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning. Good morning, Vallejo. Good morning. Before I introduce the guests, I just wanted to uh, pay tribute to my dad, who was a World War II veteran and fought in the Philippines uh, in the hills and mountains of the Philippines. He has passed on now, and he was a recipient of the Congressional Gold Medal. He died at age 94 in 2017. So good morning. As I introduce the guests of honor, will you please hold your applause until the end? Okay. I would like to start with the Honorable Hiroshi Kawamura, Consul General of Japan, Connor Donahoe, who is representing Congressman Mike Thompson's office, Tom Bertie, who is representing State Senator Bill Dodd, and Senator Bill Dodd was just here, Jana Modina, representing Assembly Member Tim Grayson, Vallejo Mayor Robert McConnell, American Canyon Mayor Leon Garcia, Vallejo Council members, I'm not sure if they're all here, but would like to also mention their names, Hakeem Brown, Mina Luera Diaz, Pippin Du, Katie Meisner, and Christina Ariola. Vallejo School District Board of Trustees, Tony Obalde, Tony Gross, John Fox, Christy Gardner, Latanya Young. Former Vallejo Mayor Osby Davis, Tony Intentley, Bob Sampayan. Our interim city manager, Mike Malone. 
Our city attorney, Veronica Neb, and assistant city attorney, Colonel Randy Riesner. Let us also acknowledge all of our veterans here today. But before we do that, can we, we can now clap and, uh, for our dignitaries this morning. Thank you for being here. Let us all acknowledge all of our veterans here today. World War II veterans, please wave your hands. Korean War veterans, please wave your hands. And if you can, stand up. We have Joe Mickelson right here with us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vietnam War veterans, please wave your hands. Or if you can stand up, please do so. Thank you. Operation Desert Storm veterans, please wave your hands. Or if you can stand up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Afghanistan, Iraq, and Global War on terror Terrorism veterans, please wave your hands. I know my husband is one of them. Thank you. Our peacetime era veterans, please wave your hands. And of course, to all the family members of our dear veterans, because you have served behind the scenes and also sacrificed on the home front to support and care for our veterans. Please wave your hands. Thank you very much and thank you for your service and thank you for being here this morning. And now, for the purpose of an official welcoming, I will call forward Mayor Robert O'Connell, a decorated combat vet veteran who vigilantly served in Vietnam with the U.S. Army, Ni Army 9th Infantry, the old Revi reliable division. Mayor O'Connell. Thank you very much. appreciate that. And to all of you who made the effort and are gracious enough to be here today, thank you very much for this appearance. This is an auspicious occasion. Pearl Harbor Day is a day that many of us grew up with, our parents lived through, our parents fought in the war. And I especially want to acknowledge the presence of Council General Kawamura because he made the gracious efforts to come to Vallejo at this time with his presence to also participate in this ceremony. And that is particularly important because as a member of the Council General Corps, today the world is faced with challenges where diplomacy must succeed. We are faced with the Russia-Ukraine problem. We are faced with the Straits of Taiwan. And as you can see, when diplomacy does not succeed, it is the people who are in the military, the friends of the military, the families of the military, and indeed the victims of war who ultimately pay that price. So I appreciate your efforts, that of the diplomacy, course and I wish you success and thank you so very much sir for being here with that allow me to read this proclamation and it reads as follows Pearl Harbor Day 80th anniversary December 7th 2021 whereas on Pearl Harbor Day December 7 1941 the United States of America was catapulted into World War II the greatest conflict the world has ever known and we mark this 80th anniversary by remembering the 16.1 million that served, of which 291,557 were killed in action. 113,842 died in service, and 670,846 were wounded in action. And we profoundly honor the remaining 240,000 living and the 234 dying as World War II veterans each and every day. And whereas 75 years after the end of World War II, we also celebrate with our original allies as well as our then fiercest adversaries around the world, because today we are partners in sharing the post-war prosperity resulting from our renewed friendship, shared sacrifices, and global alliances. And whereas thousands of Vallejo residents answered America's call for service during World War II, 
by joining the armed forces or by working at the Mare Island Naval Shipyard, the Benicia Arsenal, and other military industrial facilities, and of the over 405,399 men and women that gave the ultimate sacrifice to our great nation, 228 of those heroes are from this city of Vallejo. And today, as our beloved city is home to over 7,400 veterans, we honor and recognize all of our veteran services, their valors, their sacrifice, and immense contributions. And whereas we are grateful to the World War II generation, also known as the greatest generation, because they carried for our, cared for our country through some of our darkest as well as our brightest moments, we also thank their families and friends who served behind the scenes and also sacrificed on the home front to support and care for our veterans. And whereas on Tuesday, December 7, at 11 a.m., the Mare Island Naval Yard Association, the American <coughs> Legion Manual Quizone Post 603, and the City of Vallejo will conduct a ceremony to honor World War II veterans and commemorate the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor Day at the Vallejo Veterans Memorial Park behind City Hall. Now, therefore, I, Robert McConnell, as mayor of the City of Vallejo, and each of the seven individual council members recognize and acknowledge this date of December 7, 2001 as the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor Day. And we encourage all governing bodies, businesses, schools, organizations, and citizens to attend the ceremony as we extend our deepest gratitude to our World War II veterans and their families and friends and express our sincere appreciation to our allies for reaffirming our friendship and international alliance. So thank you so much. And I will turn this back to our master of ceremonies. Thank you, Mayor O'Connell. At this time, uh, Connor Donahoe, the service field representative for our Congressman Mike Thompson, will read a letter from U.S. Representative Thompson. Thank you. It's an honor to be here uh, with all of you and representing Congressman Thompson. On his behalf, I'm going to read a brief letter now. Dear friends, I'm sorry I can't be with you, but work has me in Washington, D.C. for legislative votes. Today marks 80 years to the fateful day that a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor took 2,403 lives and wounded 1,178. It was a day that President Franklin D. Roosevelt said will live in infamy. It was a day that changed the lives of so many and one that drew our nation into war, changing the lives of tens of thousands more. As we remember today, it's important to remember that even though many of those killed were enlisted in our nation's military, they were not in an active war zone nor was our nation at war. They were completely surprised and in some cases completely under, unprepared for the magnitude of death and destruction that occurred. The depth of the loss and tragedy that led our nation into declaring war was on a scale we had not felt at that time. Today, as we look back at the 80 years of history since that fateful day, we also express our gratitude for those who serve. The, the sacrifice of our nation's men and women in uniform that of the families and loved ones that support them is immense. Today we are filled with awe as we remember the greatest generation and the way they answered the call to serve. That sense of duty is a bright spot in a dark period of our history. And as we remember this sacrifice, we recommit to listening to the stories of those who lived through World War II and taking up the mantle of service and sacrifice. On Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, may we all remember the depth of tragedy that day and may we all resolve to work with the same sense of purpose and sacrifice of those who served. Thank you for taking a moment to honor this important anniversary. Sincerely, Mike Thompson. Thank you. Next, uh, Jenna Modina is a senior field representative, state assembly member, Tim Grayson for Vallejo Benicia. Please let us now at this time uh, welcome Jenna uh, to read a letter from Assemblyman Grayson. Great, thank you, Bruce. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Just on a personal note, it's a very special day. As a child, we celebrate, well, didn't celebrate, we remembered. My brother grew, grew up in Vallejo, went to high school here, and was stationed at Mare Island. So this was always a day that we, we personally remembered. So. On behalf of the Assemblymember who is, uh, has a conflicting appointment today, he'd like me to read this letter. 
Dear friends, thank you for honoring and saluting World War II veterans and those that survived the bombing of Pearl Harbor on this day set aside to honor their military service and their sacrifice. In decades following World War II, we and our children have always enjoyed the benefits of their service and the freedom they've protected, us, protected for us. And it is important to ensure that all generations remember what it is they sacrificed for, peace. Just, just as they and loved ones who supported them sacrificed so much to ensure peace was protected, we must carry on the efforts that they started and work for peace. I hope you will join me today not only in expressing gratitude to all of our veterans, but also the commitment to ensure that their legacy continues long into the future. To every survivor, every veteran, and to all the families that have loved and supported them, I wish you a meaningful day of remembrance and thank you deeply for your service. Assemblymember Timothy Grayson. Thank you, Jana. Our next speaker is a World War II Navy veteran, and he served with VR2 Squadron Naval Air Transport Service in Alameda and Hawaii during the Korean War. He enlisted in the U.S. Army and, and, ser and served at Camp Irwin as an artil artillery trainer at the Armored Combat Training Area. And today he's, he's extremely active in the Department of California, uh, in the Department of California of the American Legion. He is currently the first Vice Commander of District Five, Department of California of the American Legion. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome E. Paul Ball. Good morning. I am E. Paul Ball, a veteran who served in the Navy in World War II and in the Army in the Korean War. I am now with the American Legion of working with our veterans around California and all over. I'd like to read to you a letter that was put out by the American Legion National Headquarters. December the 7th, 1941. It is remembered as a date of infinity, but it should be equally recalled as a day of tra bravery. 15 medals of honors were awarded to U.S. sailors as a result of the attack on Pearl Harbor. 51 Navy crosses were earned. 53 silver stars. Those acts were not recognized were medals because a lot of acts were not recognized because the medals were not documented at the time serving others and fighting another day in order to defeat those who brought the war became job one it's a tall order eight u.s battleships were seriously damaged during the surprise attack 188 u.s aircrafts were destroyed 2,403 Americans died. Upon hearing of the attack, the task ahead was not lost upon British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. In all the wars, I never received a more direct shock, he said, as I turned and twisted in bed, the full horror of the news sank upon me. There was no British or American capital ships in the Indian Ocean or the Pacific except the American survivors of Pearl Harbor who were hastening back to California. Over the vast expanse of water, Japan was supreme and we everywhere were weak and naked. If Pearl Harbor simply ignited the Pacific War for the United States, it still would have been the most consequential event of the 20th century but it also be the spark that would lead the United States to comfort, passion, and trinity in Europe. World War II shaped the community of nations that exist today. The attack on Pearl Harbor was intended to bring an end to America as a major power. Instead, it was the Japan, Japanese Admiral Yokomoko 
feared and awakened of the sleeping giant. Six months later, the United States, U.S. Navy, and its sister branches would stage a remarkable comeback with a resounding victory over the Japanese at Midway. It was a, a turning point. Remember Pearl Harbor was the 20th century equivalent of remember the Alamo and would go on to inspire reciprocal victory of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines yearning for payback. It would inspire America to line up at military recruiting offices across the world nation. It would inspire Hollywood producers, public servants, and communities throughout America to get behind the war effort. The passage of time has not erased the evidence of the sacrifice made. Even today, the military defense POW MIAs accounting agencies continues to identify the remains of fallen Pearl Harbor veterans. Funerals of these heroes are still occurring in communities across the nation. The reunion of these forever young servicemen with subsequent generation of their families, often in the hometowns that they left 80 years ago, is the involvement of American Legion National Commander Paul Dillard, pledge no veteran left behind. They are not left behind for they still remember them. The U.S. Arizona launched in 1915 was one of Americans' first oil-filled battleships. Small amounts of contain oil continues to percolate to the harbor just above where the ship rests in the shallow waters. The oil leaks are visible to those who visit the U.S. Arizona Memorial. Pearl Harbor survivors, serial areas of their great respect, were the first to christen the Arizona leakage as the Black Tears. The crew that were lost on December 7, 1941, no longer feels pain, but their tragedy faith and touch those who knew them and who knew of them. The Arizona is not just a memorial. It's not just a shipwreck. It is a tomb, of more, tomb for more than 900 of the ships, 1,177 crew who lost their lives. We must remember Pearl Harbor not just as not just as the opening struggle of a long war. We must remember it as it was an ordinary Sunday morning in which unsuspecting American service member displayed extraordinary heroism. Eighty years later, we still remember them. For forgetting them, their heroism would be an additional act of infinity. God bless the brave souls of Pearl Harbor, and God bless America. Thank you. Next, I will introduce uh, Dinah Villanueva Ryan, who is a board member of the North Cal Sister City International Chapter, co-chair of the Pacific Rim Asia Track Connection, and chairwoman of the Vallejo Baglio Sister Committee, City Committee, and she will now read a letter from Neil Frank Ferrer, the Consul General of the Philippines in San Francisco. Thank you, sir. Good morning. I'm honored and privileged to uh, deliver to you the message of the Philippine uh, Consul General in San Francisco, Mr. Neil Frank who couldn't be with us today. On behalf of the Philippine Consulate General in San Francisco, I joined the city of Vallejo, California, Mare Island Navy Yard Association, and the American Lydian Manuel L. Carson, post 603 in your solemn observance of Pearl Harbor. 
Eighty years ago, at eight in the morning on December 7, 1941, World War II began in the Pacific with the attacks on Pearl Harbor. Just after dawn on 8 December 1941, Philippine President Manuel L. Quezon penned the following statement, and I quote, the zero hour has arrived. I expect every Filipino, man and woman, to do his duty. We have pledged our honor to stand to the last of the United States, and we shall not fail her. Happened what may. A few hours later, the Philippines would also be attacked by enemy forces. For the next four years, Filipino and American soldiers fought side by side, brothers in arm in defense of the Philippines and the Asia Pacific. Your commemoration of Pearl Harbor Day, significant as it coincides with the 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the Philippines and the United States. Today's occasion reminds us of the proud history that the Philippines and America both share a history where our two nations drew strength from one another during one of the darkest periods in world history. The 2016 conferment of the United States Congressional Gold Medal, America's highest civilian award to Filipino World War II veterans is a further testam uh, tes testament to the enduring bonds between our two peoples. My sincerest gratitude goes to the city of Vallejo and to the organizers of this event for your tireless effort in advancing the cause of all World War II veterans and their families. We at the consulate stand with you in the noble mission of ensuring that future generations of Americans and Filipino Americans are aware of this cardinal moments in our shared history. I wish you all a meaningful commemoration. Signed, Neil Frank Ferrer, Consul General, the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Dinah. <clears throat> Next, Emma Del Rosario Cordova is a board member of the Vallejo Sister City Association and the chairwoman of the Vallejo Akashi Sister Cities Committee. And she will now introduce the Honorable Hiroshi Kawamura, the Consul General of, Ahua of Japan. It's my honor to introduce the Consul General. Consul General Hiroshi Kawamura was born in 1964 and began his career at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan in 1986. Prior to his duties as Consul General of Japan in San Francisco in September 2021, he served in several senior positions in overseas mission, including Deputy Chief of Mission Minister at the Embassy of Japan in Thailand, Deputy Chief of Mission Minister at the Embassy of Japan in France, Consul General Minister at the Embassy of Japan in the United Kingdom, and Deputy Chief of Mission Minister Counselor at the Embassy of Japan in Singapore. In Tokyo, his domestic assignments have included Deputy Assistant Minister of the European Affairs Bureau, Counselor of Foreign Affairs in the Cabinet Secretariat, Director of European Policy Division in European Affairs Bureau and Director of Policy Planning Division in the Foreign Policy Bureau. In addition, he has served as first Secretary of the Permanent Mission of Japan to the United Nations and more specifically relating to our gathering today as Senior Coordinator for the Japan-US Security Treaty Division of the North American Bureau of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Consul General Hiroshi Kawamura.
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I am deeply honored and privileged to participate in this ceremony to commemorate the 80th anniversary mm. of Pearl Harbor Day. I would like to extend my gratitude to the Mayor Island Navy Yard Association, the American Legion Manual El Quezon Post 603, and the city of Vallejo for organizing today's event and inviting me to say a few words. The Second World War II was remembered as one of the most tragic periods in Japan's history that gave rise on both sides of the battle to enormous animosity, bloodshed, and countless sufferings. On behalf of the people and the government of Japan, I hereby offer with profound respect our eternal condolences to the souls who lost their lives on December 7th, 1941, as well as to the souls of countless innocent people who became victims of the war in the following years. I must also renew our deep sense of appreciation to the people and the government of the United States that started a number of undertakings towards helping Japan soon after the war was over, despite being former adversaries against Japan. The older generation of Japan attest that it was only thanks to gifts of essentials from the United States that the Japanese people managed to survive their first winter after the war. Even more significantly, the United States urged Japan to revive and strengthen democratic principles that were subdued over the course of the wartime era. Once bitter enemies, our two countries have become allies with deep and strong bonds rarely found anywhere else in history. After all, our alliance has lasted more than a quarter of the entire history of the United States. And now the US and Japan are the largest and the second largest economic powers in the free world. This unshakable Japan-US alliance is the ultimate cornerstone of peace, freedom, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. Amid an increasingly difficult and volatile security environment in the region, Japan will continue to enhance and expand our crucial cooperation with the United States even further. This is to say nothing of the many extraordinary sister city relationships between Japanese cities and US cities, which have forged people to people connections through group cultural and civic exchanges for the vast majority of the post war period. Parejo and Akashi are a shining example of such a sister city relationship. Through their constant contact with the citizens of Akashi and especially student exchanges, Parejo has helped build peace and prevent misunderstandings and conflicts in the future. We should never forget the powerful meaning that grassroots relationships have for our bilateral friendship and even for international security. All these successes are built on the enormous sacrifices made during the war, including those veterans present at today's event. Therefore, I would like to conclude my remarks by humbly remembering those 
who lost their lives in the war, with renewed determination to maintain peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region for future generations. I thank you very much. Thank you, Consul General Hiroshi Kawamara, for honoring all of us today, and especially for your heartfelt message of a very bright future among our citizens and our countries. Next, I'm going to call forward our World War II veterans that are present, along with Consul General Hiroshi Kawamara and Mayor Robert McConnell, who will lay the wreath to your right uh, to honor all the names that are forever etched on the memorial plaques behind me. So at this time, uh, Mayor McConnell, Consul General, and the World War II veterans that are present, could you please come forward for the wreath laying? Oh, we are we got something to fix there? Benediction will be given by California American Legion District 5 Chaplain Paul Del Lazaro, the same who gave the, ben the invocation. So at this time, Chaplain Del Rosario. Uh, please stand if you're able and uncover. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, with heads bowed, we give tribute to all our fallen comrades. As we bring this ceremony to a close, let us remember the POWs and MIA still unaccounted for, as well as our brave men and women now on peacekeeping missions throughout the world. We ask that you keep them safe. Before we part and go our separate ways, we also pause to think of those who are experiencing difficult times for them and their families. We pray for strength and courage and finally, dear God, in the silence of this moment, we dedicate ourselves anew to continually strengthen and deepen our collaboration with other nations in order to build a better and more peaceful world for our current and future generations. For God and country, amen. As we complete the ceremony, uh, just want to uh, thank all of you for attending today. Uh, want to wish you, give you best wishes as you return home and uh, remind you to be always vigilant of protection uh, of our ongoing virus. And uh, as we're leaving, uh, once again, you will hear uh, God Bless America, sung by U.S. Air Force Airman, First Class Keegan Bushauer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet 
home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Dismissed. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans, over there is a uh, banner that says Rebuilding Together Solano County. They have these uh, safe at home kits to give to uh, veterans as well as uh, emergency non perishable food. So please go over there where I'm uh, pointing at and pick up your safe at home kits valued at $150 as well as emergency non-perishable food. Thank you again, everybody.